is your boy JT Hustles back in with another video and in this video we're going to do part two. We're going to go over any unanswered questions you might have when it comes to becoming an independent career. If you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in these sorts of videos, I answer any unanswered questions you may have about becoming an independent courier that I have not already answered either in another video on my YouTube channel or in my book, The Drive to Freedom, that's available now on Amazon. The reason why I emphasize the fact that I only answer unanswered questions is because there's a good chance that I answered your question in previous videos several times over and over again or in the book. So if I continue to answer the same questions over and over again, then I would upload the same video every day. So while this information may be new to you, there's a good chance that I have already addressed whatever questions you may have that are not covered in this specific video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Fuck with me and get rich. rich. Pop one off, then she fly through the six. six. Keep a real nigga and she fuck with the bitch. bitch. Six in the morning and we still talking shit. shit. Drink them all, let go some weed. weed. Pop bubble gum while she thumb through her weed. The first question I have says, in the book, you say don't waste shippers' time not knowing what you're open to haul. Can you advise what's best accounts to look for that shipper won't be like, nah, you have no history, and I want to do this part-time during midday? Okay, thank you for your question. I actually was a little bit confused by this question, so I actually revisited the book myself because I was like, did I say that? In the book, I'm referring to you knowing what kind of equipment you have, meaning that if you call somebody inquiring about a route, you don't say what do you have available because they might have something for everything from a regular sedan to an 18 wheeler. So don't waste their time. I know a lot of people in this industry. I know a regional manager who things like this was like his pet peeve. Like don't waste my time. If you don't have everything from a sedan to an 18 wheeler, then why am I spending 30 minutes going over all the routes that I have available? So what I said in the book was referring to when you call in Tell them, hey, you have a cargo van, or you have a sedan, or you have a box truck, or whatever the case may be. That way they can give you the best information for what it is that you have. Or if you don't have anything, just inquire about equipment that you're willing to go get once you secure the route. As far as what's the best kind of equipment, I prefer the cargo van. I think you get the most bang for your buck with the cargo van. So I recommend a cargo van. But if you can't afford a cargo van for whatever reason, you can inquire about routes that you could possibly do with whatever equipment you do have by using the methods that I talk about in this book. Moving on, Tony Lopez asks, have you considered franchising? Don't know all the ins and outs, but it seems that franchising would tend to draw those that like yourself have a full investment. You set up the game, you set the rules, they do what you did to the extent that they are driven, you get your 10% or whatever, you might even set up a dollar startup, if they don't have the cash, you can front them and pay. Oh, hell no! And they pay you back with interest. It can look like paying forward pays back to pay further forward. It will give those that are hungry the opportunity they need to drive their future. And those that don't necessarily need to be rich but have enough to supplement a retirement, do their thing, and maybe even hit the Bahamas once in style. And someone who just don't pull their own weight can kiss the opportunity goodbye, and they did it to themselves. You're in the East. I'm out West. I'm not after an empire. I just want to make sure my sweetheart, partner, wife, girlfriend has enough cash flow to remember me with a smile after I am gone. After enough 10%, your 500% will just keep flowing in theory. Laugh out loud. All right, so Mr. Lopez, thank you for your question. I got a couple of different ways to answer this because I'm thinking about a couple of ways you might have meant this. First off, have I thought about franchising the independent courier business? No, I've never thought about it. Assuming that one possible perspective you may be inquiring about is, will I make the independent courier business easier or cheaper for people to enter? I have no desire to do that. This is a great business for those who are interested in doing this business. So if you want to go do a cheaper investment, then you can invest in whatever's cheaper that you like to do. So. I'm not really interested in trying to show somebody how to start an independent courier service for a dollar. I'm just trying to help those people who are interested in learning about how this business works 
currently. Now, looking at it from a different perspective, as far as what do I think about allowing people to invest in the courier business without being an independent courier, I have thought about that idea from time to time. It wouldn't be like you could invest a dollar today and get back whatever return in six months. So it would definitely be a long-term investment. Maybe one day at scale, allowing people who don't want to be in the trenches and running their business and managing the day-to-day -day business, if they're willing to invest money without having any kind of immediate gratification, but getting a guaranteed return down the line somewhere. And I am open to that. I don't think that it'll be something that I will do anytime soon, only because I'm not sure that enough people understand the business meaning that if somebody invests a certain amount of money and they're offered this amount of return, they might feel like that's not a fair amount only because they don't understand the business and how everything works. And I feel like that would just be a big headache right now. So maybe in the future when I feel like people actually understand how this business works, I might open up that opportunity to them. Next question, again, from my friend, Mr. Tony Lopez. Mr. Hustles, I am a subscriber, was going to give you my sob story, but by bartending isn't one of your gigs, so I'll cut to the chase. Questions. Whom do I talk to if I want in to independent carry for USPS? What will I have to have before approaching them? Vehicle parameters, insurance parameters, experience parameters. What will they want to see when I approach them? Sign, old man that still moves. Thank you so much for your question. The answer to all of those questions and more is available in my book. It's on Amazon right now. You can just type in JT Hustles and you'll see this book cover come up. And all the basics that you need to know in order to get in this business are covered if you're really interested in getting into this business. I appreciate you for all of the info, bro. I watched all of your videos and also brought the Kindle book. A question I have for you is what has been your experience with the company Lasership? Not as in a review but more as in, do they allow you to deliver as many parcels as you want to, or do they limit you? Also wondering if you knew what their typical pay range is per parcel. Thanks so much for the question, Mr. Anthony Smith. I never contracted with Lasership. I had some meetings with them before, but I never contracted with that company. I do have some close friends in the business that did contract with Lasership. I think they were getting around like a dollar per parcel or something like that, and they just got a lot of packages and did maybe between 100 to 300 packages a day. This has been a little while ago. They're not with them anymore. But I think at that time, maybe a few years back, they was getting a dollar per parcel. And they were just doing a few hundred parcels per day. Then they got in another contract that paid them way more money. So they left them. I can't give a first-hand account since I never contracted with them. Uh, none of my drivers ever contracted with them, just my friends in the industry. And as far as do they let you deliver as many pieces as you want, to my knowledge, no. Next question, Jason Lee. JT, I think you have answered every possible question possible, but I am still unclear on missing time. I understand that there are not paid days off or vacation time, but when you have a contract, in order to have time off, you have to pay someone to run your route. And if so, are you responsible for finding the person to run the route? Sorry for the long question. I'm trying to only get into this line of work as a second income. I have a part-time job with full benefits, paid time off, and I'm only trying to bring in $25,000 to $45,000 extra to my income would be great. Thanks for the question. The answer to your question is it depends on the company. The very first company that I contracted with years ago, you had to find your own driver. So fortunately enough, I had guys that were working for me. So when I had to step out, one of the guys that I hired just filled in the route that I would normally do. Since then, the companies that I've been with have had cover drivers or an overflow driver that could possibly fill in. So there is no hard, fast rule about how this goes. It's really up to the company. Most companies will tell you that it is your responsibility to find a cover driver if you have to take time off. If you're talking with a company about a direct contract, then of course you're going to have to find that driver and hire somebody for that day, week, month, whatever time you need off. This question from Manny, MVP. I have a couple questions. When it comes to hiring somebody, how should you pay them? Pay them as a contractor or employee? If employee, how do you do the payroll in for them? Also, we have to pay SSI taxes. All right, Manny, thanks for the question. I recommend hiring people as subcontractors and paying them the same way that you get paid. 
If you want to hire them as an employee, it's completely up to you. It's your business. You do what you want to do. And yes, you have to pay taxes. And as far as SSI is concerned, I will tell you to get this answer from your tax preparer. Do I have to pay it? Yes, I have to pay it. But to avoid having to go into all the details of it, I would say talk to your tax professional. If they require you to pay SSI, pay SSI. Clyde Coxley, what about using brokers? I personally believe that the way that I tell people to start this business is the best way to start the business because it is the cheapest way to start the business. If you use a freight broker, then they take a piece of the money just like the companies that I tell you to go find. But the advantage of doing it the way that I teach is that you have consistent work. So maybe you find a good freight broker that can keep you busy every single day all year long. But I know some couriers have had problems with finding consistent work when they're using a broker or going through a brokerage company and the same thing with using boards. If anybody out there is a freight broker and a good freight broker, meaning that you can keep independent couriers busy and they'll be making a decent living for themselves if they're willing to go over the road, then contact me. We might be able to work something out. I'm not going to recommend any trash broker that's just trying to make money off of some aspiring or current independent couriers. But if you can help some new or veteran independent couriers make some money by going over the road or just in their local area, contact me. We'll talk about it. We might can work something out. Next question. Reginald Leak, what makes more, a medical transportation or courier business? I'm going to be honest with you. All I ever had was a courier business. I've delivered medical supplies as far as I delivered medicine to pharmacies. I delivered body parts, meaning like if you need a, a knee replacement or a hip replacement or those kind of things that have to go to central sterling to be sterilized and then somebody has an operation and has that plate or whatever put in their body but that was still underneath my courier business so I don't know what makes more money a medical transportation or a courier business that's the last question I have you guys comment below do you guys like this format better than the live streams if you're somebody out there who still has an unanswered question that's not covered in this video or the others I have on my channel, and it's also not covered in my book, comment below, and I might be able to answer that in a future video. Also, if you want any one-on-one -on -one help, don't forget that opportunity is available to you through my Patreon. Link is in the description below. There you have it, you guys. So all my hustlers stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone. Bubble gum, while she thumb through her weed. Pop, pop, bubble gum, while she thumb through her weed. Hey, you got it. Drop Ferrari. Hey.